Today's video is made possible by Hulu Plus. For a free extended two-week trial, head over to huluplus.com slash TLD. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD. If you guys remember a while back, I did a comparison of the current generation baseline Crystal Wall MacBook Pro, which features only Intel Iris Pro integrated graphics, and I compared that against the previous generation Ivy Bridge baseline MacBook Pro, which had dedicated GT 650M graphics. Now I'm back with a comparison of those two models against the next tier up GT 750M equipped MacBook Pro, which is also based off Crystal Wall. Now before we jump into the actual performance, let's go ahead and compare the current generation MacBook Pros as far as pricing and what you actually get with each model. So for about 2000 bucks US, it's gonna get you a two gigahertz quad core i7 CPU, eight gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of PCIe based flash storage. And like I mentioned previously, you only get integrated graphics with this model, no dedicated GPU whatsoever. Now for around 2600 bucks US, let's go ahead and see what that extra 600 bucks gets you. So for this model, we're looking at a faster 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7 CPU, twice the RAM at 16 gigs versus eight, and twice the storage at 512 gigabytes versus 256 on the baseline model. Now, in addition to the Iris Pro graphics, you also get a dedicated GeForce GT 750M with two gigs of video memory. Now, what's interesting, if you actually go and configure the baseline model, it's essentially like Apple is giving you the 750M because if you notice, you bump up the CPU, you double the RAM, you double the storage, you're at that same price of $2599, except there is no 750M. So I'm not sure why Apple would allow you to configure it this way, but regardless, if you are considering doing this, don't just jump up to that next tier because you're gonna get all this plus the 750M. Now jumping over to performance, as we noted in the previous video, the Crystalwell Iris Pro only MacBook Pro held its own very well against the previous generation 650M Ivy Bridge MacBook Pro. Now as you can see, the Crystalwell GT 750M MacBook Pro outperforms both of those with a multi-core score reaching nearly 14,000. The single core score wasn't as big of a difference, which is to be expected, but regardless, you can see it does outperform those two models. Jumping over to Cinebench R15, the previous generation Ivy Bridge MacBook Pro actually outperformed the Iris Pro Crystalwell MacBook Pro, but you can see the 750M MacBook Pro actually jumps on top of both those with a score of 603. Following that is Luxmark 2.1, and this is going to test OpenCL performance. This was actually pretty interesting as far as the results go. If you take a look at the 650M only, that scored around 144K rays a second. If you jump up to the 750M, it wasn't much better, which comes in around 149. And if you notice, the Iris Pro actually outperformed both the 750M and the 650M. So the beauty of this model is not only do you have the 750M, but you have Iris Pro as well. So if you notice that last line of 847, that's actually what happened when I combined the Iris Pro plus the 2.3 gigahertz crystal well CPU, and that got the highest score of around 847K rays a second. Next up is Unigen Valley 1.0, and this is gonna test gaming performance. So you can see the Crystal Wall Iris Pro only MacBook Pro kind of suffered a little bit here not having a dedicated GPU. The 750M slightly outperformed the 650M, but you can see there really wasn't a huge difference between the 750M and the 650M in this specific test. After that, we're gonna take one more look at Cinebench R15, this time the OpenGL section, and we're looking at average frames per second. Now here you can see there's actually a pretty decent improvement from the 750M versus the 650M, and again, both clearly outperform the Iris Pro only integrated graphics on the baseline Crystal Wheel MacBook Pro. Next up is Dirt 2, and this was tested at 1680 by 1050 and 2880 by 1800. Now I'm sure by now you can start to see there's a theme developing as far as gaming goes. The 750M is just a little bit better than the 650M, and both of these clearly outperform Iris Pro as far as gaming goes. Next up is Black Magic Disk Speed Test. And you can see both Crystal Well MacBook Pros, both the $2,000 and $2,600 model, perform very similarly, and both are a significant improvement over the Ivy Bridge 650M MacBook Pro. Following that is a 10.5 gigabyte file duplication. This is gonna actually show you what those previous numbers mean in terms of real world performance. Again, you can see both Crystal Well MacBook Pros are very similar in performance, and are both significant upgrades against the previous generation MacBook Pro. Next up is the Driver Heaven Benchmark version 3.0. We're looking at Photoshop CC, and here you can actually see the Crystal Well 750M MacBook Pro outperforms the other two by a pretty significant amount. Following that is Aperture 3.5. What I did was take 10 raw photos, convert them into JPEG at 50% the size, and you can see all three models perform very closely here with the 750M MacBook Pro just coming out slightly on top. We'll go ahead and jump over to Handbrake, the 64-bit edition. And what I did was take a one-minute MKV file, transcode that into H.264, and you can see the Crystal Well 750 and MacBook Pro outperform both models, but not by a whole lot in this specific test. Jump it over to iMovie 10.0, what I did was take a three-minute 1080p project and export that. You can see there was around a four-second improvement over the baseline Crystal Well MacBook Pro, and around 11 seconds over the previous generation 650M MacBook Pro. Jumping over to Final Cut Pro 10, this is where I saw a big difference with the 750M MacBook Pro, 
I took a 7 second H.264 clip, retimed it down to 50%, stabilized it, added optical flow, and you can see the 750M MacBook Pro did that task much faster than both the baseline crystal wall MacBook Pro and the previous generation 650M Ivy Ridge MacBook Pro. Moving on to more Final Cut Pro 10 tests, I took a 45 second H.264 clip, applied a blur, and again you can see the 750M MacBook Pro outperform the other two models by a significant amount. In my last set of Final Cut Pro 10 tests, I did two things here. I exported a three minute project and I also transcoded three minutes of 1080p footage to ProRes. Now you can see going down the line, the Ivory Bridge MacBook Pro took four minutes and 13 seconds to export that project. The baseline Crystal Wall MacBook Pro did that in three minutes and 43 seconds, while the 750M MacBook Pro did that same project in three minutes and 13 seconds. And again, you can see it outperforms both those models with transcoding as well. Next up, we're looking at After Effects CC, and I have two main tests, a warp stabilize and a track camera test. Just like Final Cut Pro 10 again, you can see the 750M does outperform both the Iris Pro Baseline and the previous generation Ivy Bridge MacBook Pro, and it did beat it by pretty decent amounts. Now, like I talked about in my previous video, one thing to note, if you use After Effects extensively and you want CUDA acceleration, you can't get that with the Iris Pro only Baseline Crystal Wall MacBook Pro. For example, there's a 3D race tracing benchmark that I cannot run on the Iris Pro only MacBook Pro. I can only do that on the 650M or 750M equipped MacBook Pros. Conversely, on that benchmark, there wasn't a huge difference with the 750M versus the 650M MacBook Pro. Moving on to more Adobe, this time we're looking at Premiere Pro CC for a warp stabilized test. Again, you can see the 750M MacBook Pro clearly outperforms both the Iris Pro Baseline and previous generation 650M Ivy Bridge MacBook Pro. Now that same 3 minute 1080p project I exported in Final Cut Pro 10, I did the exact same thing in Premiere Pro CC. Once again, you can see the GT750M MacBook Pro came out on top as far as performance goes. It outperformed the 650M model by about a minute in terms of export times and just over 30 seconds better against the baseline Crystal Well MacBook Pro. Next up is temperatures. We're looking at degrees Celsius and a light load with Safari browsing and a heavy load during a Final Cut Pro 10 export. Now because the 750M and 650M are dedicated GPUs, you can see they're very similar in terms of temperatures go. And because the baseline Crystal Well MacBook Pro only has integrated graphics, it performs the coolest out of these three models. So hopefully these benchmarks help give you a better idea in terms of what you are looking for in a MacBook Pro. And before I hop out of here, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to Hulu Plus for making this video possible. Now I know most of you guys being on the interwebs know what Hulu is, but Hulu Plus ramps up the awesome and is kinda of like upgrading to an HD screen on your smartphone or tablet for the first time. With Hulu Plus, you can catch up on the entire season of currently airing shows. You can watch old favorites or even a movie. You can stream as many TV shows or movies as you want anytime, anywhere. So whether that's your PS4, your Xbox One, your Roku, Hulu Plus has a huge selection of shows like Saturday Night Live, Jimmy Kimmel, and of course, Shock Tank. They also feature exclusive original content like Behind the Mask and The Wrong Man, and they were nice enough to reach out to me and offer those who watch TLD a free extended two-week trial by heading over to huluplus.com slash TLD. Now, a lot of you ask, how can you help support the channel? This is a super simple and easy way to do that. It allows us to put out the best possible content that we can and just score a killer deal at the same time. Make sure to use that link down below to let them know what we sent you. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to hit that like button. It is much appreciated. I think the summary here is if you own a 650M MacBook Pro, there's really no major reason to upgrade to the current generation MacBook Pro. I would wait till the follow-up from this one, which is gonna be based off the Broadwell platform. Now conversely, if you're looking to buy a MacBook Pro for the first time or you own a much older MacBook Pro, it really comes down to how you're going to use your computer. So if you use After Effects, you do a lot of 3D work, you're probably going to want to opt for the 750M model. And as a bonus, you're going to get double the storage and double the RAM. Now if you don't really need that and you're fine with the 256 gigs of storage and the 8 gigs of RAM, you can see the baseline MacBook Pro actually performs pretty well for not having any dedicated graphics. I think really the downside with the integrated only graphics is you're going to take a hit with both gaming and 3D work. So if you do those and you want to do that with your computer, you're probably going to want to either opt for the 750M MacBook Pro or take a look at a previous generation refurbished 650M MacBook Pro, all of which I will have linked down below. Again, this is Jonathan with TLD. If you guys have not seen my Mac Pro coverage yet, that is linked right here, and I will see you guys later.